Mirage Tower, a tall brick-built structure standing at the entrance of Route 111's desert in Hoenn. Or is it? I guess that is why they call it Mirage Tower. This was an entire little dungeon added in Pokemon Emerald version and is yet another cool thing that makes the game unique. So after you obtain the Go Goggles, you can finally access the desert and explore this place for yourself. Sometimes a Mirage Tower will be there and sometimes it won't. The solution to get it to show up again is literally just exiting the area and then coming back to reload it. There is one hiker NPC off to the side who gives you some clues about it. He thinks that it may have some kind of spooky origin. That makes sense because in Japanese this place is called the Phantom Tower, Ooh, But inside you won't really find too much. The only Pokemon that show up are Trapinch and Sandshrew. Not even Ball Toy, which seemed like a perfect candidate. As you go up, you'll find cracked floors that require the mock bike to speed across without falling through. The whole thing is actually a lot shorter than I remember. It took almost no time to reach the top. And the final room is where you'll find the Claw Fossil and the Root Fossil. In the original Ruby and Sapphire version, these would be in a sand pit at the farthest end of the desert. Taking one would cause the other to sink into the pit, seemingly lost forever. Meanwhile, on the top floor of Mirage Tower, it's just about the same deal. The tower is about to collapse into the sand and there's only enough time to grab one fossil. I know the player was given a choice of fossils in the other games for one reason or another, but here you're making me feel like I'm in a life or death situation. I, I gotta decide who gets to live or die? What, what do you mean? Well, I grab the one closest to me and suddenly everything comes crashing down. It's pretty cool how the little player character is just thrown out and lands in the desert, watching while the tower fades away into the pit along with the other fossil. They're just rubbing it in now, I, I totally had time to go grab it. But that was basically Mirage Tower. A fun little extra adventure that wasn't all too necessary, but I think it was a pretty great way to add some mystery and expand the quest to obtain the fossils. On one hand, I kind of like just walking into the deepest part of the desert and then finding them laying there, but on the other, placing them inside a weird tower that is there one moment and gone the next is a perfect way of keeping them hidden for the player to obtain. And the Mirage Tower as a whole can serve as a way of rewarding the player for exploring and gathering information that they can then use when they revisit an area that might not think to. There is no lore explanation for the Mirage Tower, and it has never been explored in any other Pokemon media outside of the video games, except for last year during Project Voltage, which is a collaboration between Pokemon and Miku. Specifically, it was a ground-type Miku that referenced Mirage Tower in its concept art. So yeah, that was a deep cut. I really do love this design overall, and it's probably my favorite out of the bunch. There's like a video of it somewhere on the channel, I I'm starting to lose track though. But I know what you're thinking. Is there any way to get that other fossil that sank into the sand? Why yes, there is. Yet another reward for paying attention. Our expedition isn't over. Back on the outskirts of Fall Arbor Town in a house owned by a man known as the Fossil Maniac. The first time you visit him, you'll see that he started digging a tunnel from the back of his house through the mountains and into the land. It is pretty impressive as is, but he promises to keep digging even further. And by the time you become the champion, he will have expanded his cave into the freaking catacombs of the Hoenn region. This new cave is so long. I was starting to wonder if it was ever going to end. There are some Pokemon here, mostly Whismur and Loudred, who no doubt really hated all the digging going on here. But you can also find Ditto actually pretty easily and a very helpful encounter for the post game. As you reach the end of the caverns, you'll start to know the sand on the ground until you come to a large clearing with the other fossil in the center. I can't believe this guy dug all the way from Fall Arbor Town to the desert of Route 111. Either way, he's nowhere to be found at the moment, so I guess it's all mine. And now able to restore both ancient Pokemon for myself, that brings us to the end of Mirage Tower. I find it really interesting that they decided to add something like this into Emerald version. Yeah, it is pretty cool and it doesn't exactly take away from anything. And on top of that, there's a lot more that was added into this game, so it's not like it's drawing any resources away from them. But I really can't pin down why it's here. I mean, in the world of Pokemon. In terms of the game, yeah, I get it. It's supposed to be a cool feature that mixes things up and makes sure you obtain the fossils. Though it really is one of those strange places that you just have to accept. And I can at least do that. The desert area is already so weird and mysterious, so adding in a phantom tower, I guess, is a way to top it all off. The biggest surprise is that there was never any explanation, whether necessary or not. And I don't even mean like just in the video games, this was never used in like the manga or anime or anything else. I don't even see it discussed all that often and theories are pretty sparse. That isn't to say it needs an explanation. I mean, I got my two fossils out of this adventure so I'm not complaining. But in a place where Baltoy exists as well as Regirock's tomb, I want to believe there's a connection. Like maybe placing the two fossils at the top of the tower was a way of protecting them. However, its ability to appear and disappear still has a bit of supernatural vibe that doesn't really match up with anything else here. I guess it really can just remain a mystery. 
So let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you ever visited this place and what are your theories about its origin? Also tell me which fossil you chose in this situation. Me personally, I always got the claw fossil, but retrospectively, I honestly like Lilip a lot more, so I would go root fossil. But we'll chat more about ancient Pokemon in June when it's appropriate. Anyway, I I've, I've got to get out of here. The, the whole place is going down. Thank you to every channel member for your continued support, especially the great Gators. DeAndre, GigaWiiU64, Claude Singh, Waterloo Miz, Mazhar Siddiqui, Cosmo Zero, Justin Dows, Mr. Saturn, Rainfrox, Cheezit62, Swiss Cheese Shiny Hunter, Michael Snyder, Lockadox, Gallantry, GatorKid509, TF, Cheeseburger Lasers, Mathaclock947, Nomad Nobi, Pastel Blood, Taijirai, Justin R, Phantom, and Quago. If you would like to support, see your name here, get some access to emotes for comments, live streams, and sometimes early videos, you can become a channel member today. You can also follow me on Twitter as well for more memes. Anyway, this is GatorX. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all later. Momentum is building with more ways to collect, trade, and play. Plus, holographic basic energy cards and select booster packs for supercharged power. Pokemon trading card game EX Emerald, bursting with energy. Booster packs sold separately.